Dr. Nojawadi Aled, once again, it's nice to be with you once again. So today we're going to talk about what it means to be resilient. So we're talking about resilience, you know, and um, I say be resilient, and uh, what does it mean? So life is not going to just give itself to you. You have to fight for it. You have to fight for it. So it's very critical that you understand our... Uh, what that means to you in the name of Jesus. But I know one thing, at the end of the day, you will be triumphant. At the end of the day, you will be the one standing. At the end of the day, you will be stronger in the name of Jesus Christ. The mountains do not change. Mountains do not change. They remain constant. You know, so... Instead of staring at the mountain and expecting it to lower itself, I would challenge you to learn to begin to climb instead. Yes, mountains do not change. They remain constant. They remain the same. You know, but the time you will spend staring at it, expecting the mountain to lower itself, I can tell you that you can climb through that mountain. If you cannot climb through it, you can go around it. And peradventure, you cannot climb through it. You cannot go around it. There will be a way through it in the name of Jesus Christ. You have what it takes to pray through it. No matter the mountain of a situation you're dealing with, you can climb through it. You can go around it. You can go through it in the name of Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage you today that things may look harder for you, but it's not the end. It, things will only get better. It is all about how you look at it, how you look at life, how you look at it. that inside of you. How well are you able to pull it out? Sometimes some of us need somebody to help to pull it out of us. But for most of the people, you have it and you know it. You know you can do it. You are just scared to take the step of faith and know that you know. So, we need to build our resilience. We can build it. We can build it through prayers. We can build it by just taking a step, one step at a time. You don't need to be able to do a uh, run up the mountain at once. It's just a step at a time. A step at a time, and you will be able to overcome it. Build your capacity. It takes your building your capacity to climb the mountain. It takes the, your building your capacity to even have the understanding and the assurance that you can do this. You can do this. I strongly believe that in life, when we face these challenges, just because we have understanding, we are able to come overcome the situation. I am praying today that your life will be transformed in the name of Jesus Christ. The wind of life will blow. Like I use the, the palm trees uh, as an example. The wind will blow. It will tint you to one side. It will seem like you want to break and it will, while you are just recovering, it will take you to the other side. But nonetheless, at the end of it all, when that season is over, you are strong. You are standing. You are not broken. Even you will be amazed at yourself that you went through this and you did not break. So don't try to fight the wind of life. Do not try to fight the wind of life. It will surely come. It's a season in life. It will come. It will, we may be in summer right now. I'm telling you the fall will come. Where all the leaves may fall off. And some people's life is like that. It will come all. Well, during the fall, there's a fall of life also. And when you go through that season, know that when the spring shows up, you'll, you will spring up again. You have the capacity to spring up in the name of Jesus. Now, I want to say this to somebody. As you are listening to me, know that the wind of life is not meant to kill you. The wind of life is not meant to destroy you. The wind of life is only there to strengthen you so that you can be you can withstand a storm you can withstand greater storm in the name of Jesus Christ the important thing you can always know is that you can bounce back that is very key 
in this message. You have what it takes to bounce back. Then, you know, that is very important. You know, there's a scripture that uh, where God says, whatsoever we go through, he says he's with us at all times. He says, Lord, I am with you always. So in that moment, that wind, that season, you're dealing with, God is with you in the midst of God. If you look at the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, while they were in their fire furnace, while they were in the heat, God was with them because he kept to his word. He was with them in the midst of that. When the world thought they were done for, they were dead for all practical purposes. But God was with them. God saw them through. So they went through their own season, but they were resilient in their spirit. They were determined to say, I will not bow to any other God because I know my Redeemer and live it. I know God is with me. Even if you toss us into the fire furnace and God does not save us, we will still not bow to your God. They had the boldness to say that to King Nebuchadnezzar because they understood they carry purpose. They understood they carry legacy. They know that the heat of life May, if it, it may melt them, but they know that they can also overcome it. So they took a stand. And I pray that we will understand that God is with us at all times. At all times, he is with us. One of my favorite guys in the Bible is Paul. I'm sure he's an epitome of resilience. Paul was one person in the Bible that at all times will talk about what it takes to be a believer. You know, Paul, in writing in his words to us, he says that we are, but we have the treasure in earthly vessels. In eighteen vessels, that is what he declared. I strongly believe that when speaking about treasure in earthly vessels, Paul is talking about all of these values that makes us to be resilient. All of the values that makes us to resi be resilient. So that's very important. There is courage, you know, in, in all of this because we need to have the courage. Be courageous when you want to, you know, face life. When life hits you, it takes courage to be resilient. So we'll, all of that is very important. And then inside of you, it's that courage and the purpose of God for you. And if you do not understand the fact that you carry purpose, it's very easy for you to succumb to the heat of life. I use the life of these three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They understood life. They understood. I can imagine the pressure of life, the pressure of friends, the pressure of peers, the pressure from all angles on them to succumb to the situation. But they refused because they had the courage, the audacity to say no to what would have appeared to be just just bow. Nobody, it's not going to kill you. Just do it. A lot of us, we deal with that situation in our lives where we deal with pressure, external pressure, and the voices speaking to our spirit man. And uh, we get stuck because we do not have the capacity in us to push back and say, hey, I can't uh, do this. Uh, what I'm hearing from God is different. That is very important, you know. So God, you know, has deposited that inside of you, which means that you have it. You have it. I'll repeat it. You have it inside of you. So Paul says, oh, have, how, excuse me. Paul says, how we have this treasure in 18 verses. And he says that the excellence of the power 
may be of God and not of us. In other words, it is by his grace. It's by the grace of God, not by us. So we need that. It is like a power pack for us. By, you know, when we all connect to his grace, that is what sustains us. So we have to grab that understanding when we deal with this situation. And now I want to ask you this question. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? I see in you somebody that have the capacity. I see in you the person that have the elasticity to overcome life. I see in you the person that has what it takes to take a firm stand and rise up for Jesus. I, that is who I see in you. What do you see yourself as? What do you see in yourself? You know, I want you to demonstrate resilience at all times. Whatsoever that particular thing you're dealing with currently, you have it to overcome it. So I need you to always, always do that. Let us look at Second Chronicles chapter 4, 7 to 9. Second Chronicles 4, the New International Version. I'm going to read. It says, but we have this treasure in jars of days to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. That is the translation. We have heard pressed on every side. We, we are had pressed from every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Why so? But that is the word of God. You, all of this can happen because you have the spirit, the grace of resilience in you, in the name of Jesus. And I know that a lot of us will feel that we are struck down right now. We feel like we are going through all kinds of persecution right now. But we also know, I know that you have what it takes to overcome that. You know, do not remain there. You do not remain there. That is what the scripture have just said to us. You may, it may seem like you are struck down. But you are not defeated. You are not abandoned. You are not left to fend for yourself. Because you got God inside of you. Hallelujah. Things will surely come our way. But we are not going to remain there. We are not going to remain there. The future is brighter than your yesterday. Your future is brighter than your yesterday. So you're not going to let anything you know, break you, mar you, because of that moment, three things you're dealing with. Some of these problems could look like a, a lasting situation, but I know that God is in the midst of the boat at all times. He is with you at all times. Your miracle is on the other side of the mountain. It is there. Don't be stuck. Don't be fooled that you are facing a mountain right now. Because on the other side, your miracle is there. It's just for you to be able to climb through it and you will meet your miracle in the name of Jesus. Some people will say, you don't understand my situation. And they think, oh, the grass is green on the other side. But I tell you, you don't know what it takes for them to water the grass. Their water be may be higher than yours also. So it's very important not to compare yourself with what other people are doing. Sometimes we look at things with our physical eyes and it takes away the spiritual purpose in it. So I pray that God will help you in the name of Jesus. Now resilience, we're going to talk three factors about resilience. One, resilience will always find a way out of that situation. Resilience will always find a way out of that difficulty. Resilience will find a way out of that you know, roadblock. What it seems like you are stuck Resilience will always find a way out of it. So I pray that you will have that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. And now, you know, 1 Corinthians 10 says that no, no temptation has overtaken you 
except what is common to mankind. That is, there is nothing you are going through now that others have not been through. That is what the scripture is saying. And what is common to mankind? Whatever you are going through is common to mankind. It's common to other people. Others are dealing with the same situation in the name of Jesus. So I want you to know this. Come up with something. You know, take a list of whatsoever you're dealing with. You will be shocked that it's not really that uh, life uh, bending or life destroying. It just needed a shift in perspective. It needed a shift in the way we look at things. In the name of Jesus. Now, so I always want you to know that at all times. Now we're going to talk about the second attribute of resilience. The second attribute means that it w resilience embraces change. Some of the things we deal with is because we are unwilling to change. Resilience will embrace change at all times. So when you're dealing with something, sometimes God allows you to go through it because he wants to open your eyes to see bigger things. That is very, very critical for us. Change is essential in life. It is critical in life. So we will we'll learn to be more adaptable. We, are le we learn to be more open to changes, to new things. To, you know, sometimes you, we deal with situations, we become the hold block for ourselves. We become the limitation for ourselves. I encourage you to embrace change and face life of crisis. When you, whatsoever you're dealing with, whatever that crisis is, I encourage you to embrace change. You know, that will help you a lot. It's change in life. There is change in life. The way we did things 2020 is not the same way we're dealing with things now. Life is progressive. Let's not be stuck in the way we deal with things. Yeah, so I'm going to talk to you again on the third attribute of uh, resilience. Now, the third attribute of resilience is that it's, it welcomes new ideas. It's open to new ideas. Sometimes we deal with situations our minds are blocked. We come to a roadblock in our lives, in our mind, we're not open to new ideas, no new suggestions. We think the way we used to doing it 20 years ago remains the same. No, life is innovative. Life is innovative. One of the reasons life has hit you that hard is because you are not open to you know, new ideas. New opportunities come with new ideas. So sometimes just that one click can open big doors for you. So I want you to know that. Let's, let your mind be stayed on God. Let your mind be... Uh, it gives you the ability for innovation. It gives you the ability for opportunities. So let's very... You know, we all need resilience. We all need to be able to persevere we, in the midst of difficulties and challenges. I encourage you to be perseverant. That's very important. Resilience tribes. Resilience comes alive in the midst of circumstances, in the midst of challenges. It comes alive. It's like, I am here, you know. That is the spirit of resilience. When you're dealing with it, it's very important that you, it gives you the capacity to think and think right. It gives you the capacity to come up with solutions. That is what sustained the children of Israel in Egypt. For all that they went through, the more they were oppressed, the more they were productive, the more they were innovative. Most of the pyramids in Egypt today were built by the children of Israel. They still cannot understand how that happened. Because even when the taskmaster reduced their struggles, they were more productive. Because they were resilient in their spirit. That sustained them through the wilderness when they were going to the promised land. They had to, that resilience they had developed while in Egypt sustained them through the wilderness. So we all have it. It is called strength. Your inner strength. You have it inside of you. Everybody have what it takes to be resilient. I want you to know that 
you alone can bring it out. You need to be able to rise up from that situation. No matter what you're dealing with, it's not the end of life. The mountain can be, you can climb that mountain. You just need to be stretched a little bit. You can go around the mountain of situation you're dealing with. But, you know, at, in all of it, always ask God for insight. Always ask God for wisdom. Ask God for understanding. Ask God for direction. He's the one that orders our steps. He's the one that is able to do all things for us. We, the, the enemy will speak, but the voice of God supersedes the voice of the enemy. You can climb mountains. You can go through the storm and not be bent and not be broken. You can go through the wilderness and come out refreshed. God uses opportunity to build us up. I want you to know that I love you. I, I will keep praying for you.